Okay. Right. So empower people to achieve quality is the next slide we have. How do you empower people? By providing information that's accurate, right? And that information must be up to date. So the two are related. It cannot be accurate without being up to date. Uh, you must also give people opportunities to innovate. And we are talking about uh, staff that work in the setting uh, to come up with new ways of meeting people's needs, new ways of meeting children's needs, innovative ways. Uh, there must be room for individual initiative, uh, special autonomy. So you don't want to micromanage uh, staff in your setting. You want to give them room to actually work freely and come up with solutions to some problems themselves. Uh, the processes must also be consistent. Uh, the last thing you want to do is to be inconsistent in your approaches. That will dent perception of quality, or quality of perception, okay? Uh, and that will also have an impact on quality of fact. Uh, then when it comes to roles, it's important that you have people who are responsible for specific areas, specific aspects of your service. You do not have that ambiguity where you don't know who is responsible for what, uh, because that will have an impact on who is accountable for what when things go wrong. Um, conversely, when things go right, you want to give credit uh, to the right people. You can't do that if there are no specific responsibilities. Uh, training in CPD, is always going to be important, especially when it comes to continuous improvement. Okay, there will always be new challenges, there will always be new uh, initiatives in which people need to be trained. Uh, do you have any questions before we move on? Okay, right. Uh, you also need to consider processes. Uh, what standards are in place, right? What is it that you are putting into the work that you do, uh, the quality that you, 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 you are aspiring to achieve. You're looking at uh, the knowledge you are inputting, and even the, the financial resources that you put uh, into your, your quality processes. Everything that you do matters when it comes to quality. It's a, a full picture uh, approach rather than looking at one aspect. Uh, like we said earlier, we talked about um, aiming to make sure you develop children cognitively, effectively, and also within the psychomotor domain. For you to be able to do that, you must make sure the resources are there um, in, in, in your setting to, to be able to, to, to meet children's needs. Uh, you are not only interested in what you're putting in, you're also interested in what is coming out of your processes. What is this service like? What kind of end result do you have? If the service does not meet the aims that you set out to meet, then you need to look at your processes again until your end product is consistent with your intentions. Uh, they are what are known as KPIs. What are they? Key performance indicators. Key performance indicators. Well done, Sarah. Uh, so what are they? What, what, what are we talking about there? performance indicators um, that perhaps in, in context of um, like settings, the manager would perhaps look at um, targets that have been set at review, yep. um, appraisals, um, Ofsted, you could look at maybe perhaps that partnership with parents, policy <coughs> teaching, they would be indicators of, of performance within a setting. Well done, well done. Um, you also need to look at systems, how different components are working together towards the same goal. Different departments are working together towards the same goal. That's the definition of a system. It's having different components are working together for a common purpose or common cause. And then you have quality assurance. You need to identify and rectify any defects in your processes. Don't wait for things to go horribly wrong. Correct them as you go. Make amendments, make adjustments as you go. Okay, 
Right. What page move on? Uh, I talked about continuous impro improvement at the beginning. Now, continuous improvement looks at quality as a process, not as an end. When you say quality, it's a process. It's constantly ongoing. It's constantly work in progress. You'll never come to a point where you say, oh, we're done. When it comes to quality, we're done. We have reached where we want to get, and now we are just going to stagnate. No, it's always work in progress. Uh, so good enough is never good enough. All right? We need to constantly look at what is it that we need to, do to improve on. Give yourselves moments of reflection as a collective and as individuals. Then you must have purposive identification of and action on areas for improvement. These must be noted, not only noted, but also acted on. Right? And at the bottom there I've said today's best is tomorrow's mediocre. Right? So what do you think is fantastic now? Five years down the line may not be fantastic. You do the same things that you're doing now and get grade one. If you do them exactly the same way in five years time it's not going to be a great one it's going to be a great four why because expectations are constantly changing and challenges are also changing threats also will constantly change so you don't know what it is that will put children's welfare at risk in five years time so you need to constantly adapt to the changing environment changing external forces okay are we okay to move on all right. Now, quality settings, um, probably I'll just highlight holistic approach when it comes to quality. Again, we are going back to cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. And we're also looking at all areas of our provision, including a clean environment is as important as what is happening in the classroom. Um, keeping children safe is also important. Furniture that you have in your setting, right? Any broken furniture is moved out, the place or the bed, any broken equipment, keeping children safe. When you look at um, the five outcomes of every child matters, you must make sure that each of those outcomes is being sufficiently addressed within your, your setting. Are children happy? Are they healthy? Are they safe? Are they making a positive contribution? And so on. Okay? So it takes, it, it takes everyone within your setting to make sure that children's quality is of the right standard. It's got to be holistic. You're looking at the physical, the intellectual, the language development, the emotional development, the social development, your piles as well. Um, when you look at EYFS, are you looking at children as individuals, for example? Uh, learning and development, is it being considered? Not just learning, but also development. It takes us back to the three domains uh, of learning. Now, we also talked about user-based uh, or product-based service. Now, what's important there? Should your service be user-based or should it be service-based? What's more important than the other? Are you basing it on the service or on the user? Based on the user because you're basing it on the children. Yeah. And then you're also basing it on the families and the communities that you serve. Yeah. Um, the service itself will then We've talked about this um, in great detail before the break. Everyone has got to be involved, all hands on deck. Right? Uh, there must be clear systems to produce, to provide, to measure and evaluate. Right? All that is important. How do we measure our quality? 
is an important question. It's not just saying, right, let's do this and our planet is good. We also need to be sure how do we know we are doing well? How do we know when we fail to meet our targets? So you need to have appropriate measurement strategies in place. How do you evaluate your skill and your settings quality? And your evaluation must be holistic as well. A user experience of the commodity or service is important. How is your user experience in your service? How are children experience in your service? Are they safe? Are they healthy? Are they happy? Are they making a positive uh, contribution? Right, conformance to requirements, not elegance. We've talked about that. So that's, in a nutshell, um, a summary of, of quality. And now what we have on the next slide, okay, to move on. Right, what we have on the next slide is based on what you've learned regarding quality, right? Discuss quality in terms of children's services. Who wants to go first? Yeah. 
time as well, making sure that everything you look at what's coming in the future, you look at like the data from previous years, or looking at like for the needs or the problems that might arise, and then planning for it in the future. Yes. Well done. Okay. Um, Would you do this one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably not. What does Ofsted say and do about good provision? Let's start with what they say. So they would say things like um, good provision will enable all children to achieve, um, and then they will have like their. And what do they mean by achieve? Is it? Well, if you, if you look at. Um, five outcomes, maybe perhaps it may contribute to some of those. In my personal opinion, I don't think it contributes to all of them, yeah. but they, it is subjective on perhaps like your, um, in the early years, your three areas, so you've got like your um, physical development, your personal, social, emotional, and then your um, communication and language, which mm -hmm. would go back to Benjamin, um, but in these three areas, um, but in schools perhaps it would be more of an academic perspective that they would look at the results, stats, exams. Okay. Right. All right. And what do they do? So that's what they say. What do they do? So they would inspect settings. They would measure their notion of quality. Their notion. I like that. Their notion <laughs> of quality. Yeah. And they'd come away with claims of this is what we know about the school. Th this is what we know, however, that would be a subjective view based on an inspector's report and then a snapshot of perhaps what they see, but they would perhaps then also take into account league table results, um, other facts, they look at parents, children's perspectives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would it also that? make recommendations? Yeah. And to make that setting even better? Like I yeah. say, it's constant way. You've got to keep up with the times and changes and policy yeah. and the different needs of children. I can't so live good at the minimum. All right, so satisfactory is not good enough. I'm just a lover. <laughs> oh. Just a, just a you know. Okay, right. So what is consistent with theoretical perspectives, uh, theoretical aspects of theory? What's that? Theoretical aspects of theory, what does that mean? <laughs> okay, keep it out of me. Right, what is consistent with theory you have learned so far? And what is inconsistent? From what you do in your settings, what is it that is consistent with theory and what is not? Care. Okay, that's consistent. Shopping. Okay. And what's not? The children are not consistent. Are not? All the same. Children are not consistent, they are not all the same. Don't expand. Okay. So the different aspects of the child, what they need to help them, yeah. um, the different levels that children learn at, and the way that they learn. So that's why like, that's got you consistent <coughs> in the different children. The children are always consistent because there's always children there. Yeah. But the inconsistency within the children is how different each child is. Yeah. And how what they expect and want changes over time. Yeah. Okay. Well done. Right. Next section deals with political landscape, policy and key debates. Okay, we're there. Right. Now this section is based on that text. Any child with education and care in England under austerity, uh, continuity or change in political ideas, policy goals, availability, affordability, and quality in child care. That's a terrible title of the general article. It's kind of that long, it's just like an essay. Anyway, but this, this is what the next section is based on, and this document is in today's lesson four. Okay.
right? So any codes that you're going to come across is coming from here. Okay. Am I in the shop? <laughs> right. Are you going to move on? Right. So development. So before 1998, there was very little intervention in the sector, little government intervention in the sector. Okay. Um, current large private profit sector in care and get education. So currently we have more uh, intervention relative to before 1998, more government intervention. I feel like they want to be involved in what we're doing. And the current picture is also that we currently have a lot of large private for profit um, providers. Is that consistent with what you know? You know, there's large chains yeah, when it comes to child care providers, right? Um, significant change, um, but there, there's been very little improvement. So things have changed a lot since 1998, but when it comes to actually what has improved, very little has improved. All right. W what's your experience of having these large child care chains? Is it a positive thing or negative? I think it depends because I'm from a very, very small, so we're an independent like run. But I think perhaps some of it would be from them a positive because they can invest more in the staff, CPD. Yes. Um, the girls' wives as well. I think maybe perhaps there are some, definitely some positives in it. Okay. Uh, any possible limitations to having too many? large corporate players. We use individuality. So okay. food could just be a bit too standardised. Say if you've got ten nurseries that run one in Bella and they are they have the same policies and procedures. Regardless of where they are. Yeah. So it wouldn't account for maybe um, the different children in different areas. Yeah. Um the needs of the communities that they're in. So say if one nursery is in um a more affluent area than another, then the needs of the children may be different. Excellent. Yeah. Also as well through branding, if you have um like a large perhaps chain of nursery, then you've got that preconceived conception of quality in comparison maybe perhaps to another setting <coughs> that maybe does have a match for match on offset, not to say that that's a definition of quality, but you yeah. would you would have that idea then and that notion of quality which may not necessarily be a truth. Yep. Okay. Now since twenty ten, why why is that date significant? Twenty ten? Yeah, that's when we we had the coalition. That's when the conservatives came into power, right? And initially it was a coalition government, uh, liberal democrats and conservatives. So 2010 saw a lot of changes in policy goals, uh, approach to service provision. And what was observed then was there were inconsistencies in policy. That's what we mean by uh, diminishing policy coherence. Uh, e.g. contradictions regarding quality and affordability. Because the government was saying we are going to provide affordable quality care. The two do not always go hand in hand because quality will cost money. You cannot have affordable and quality at the same time. That's very rare. So those two policies were actually incoherent. They were contradicting or contradictory. And then we had uh, issues to do with availability, affordability, and quality. Again, these three do not tend to actually go together well. Uh, one, at least one must give. At the same time, settings were being closed. Remember, sure stop centers, how rapidly they were closed. Now, how do you reconcile uh, the goal to make child care available and the reality of the closure of the setting, how do you reconcile the two? The inconsistency is there, right? If you're closing the settings, how do you make 
care available when you are closing it. You would think that if you want to make care available, child care available, you do not close. Rather, you need to open more settings. Um, and then you also had severe local authority budget cuts, which affected support for child care. Again, you can argue that we may have had an impact on, on quality. Uh, and then you had cuts in tax credits and benefits that have affected families with young children. All right? That said, one observation that was made is cuts did not affect the impact on participation in ECEC across the 27 EU member states, including the UK. So you still had these participants, the same number, effectively, uh, of participants. By participants, we mean the providers of uh, child care and education, even though we had uh, such severe cuts. Okay, are we okay to move on? Yeah, yeah. All right. Now the ECEC. What does ECEC mean? Early childhood education plan. Well done. Yeah. Excellent. Right. The role of the state regarding the market <coughs> is influencing changes at all levels of policy making. That's what is currently happening. The government is actually taking a particular interest in the area or in the sector. And there is an emphasis, a serious emphasis, on the promotion of child care business, uh, businesses together with weaker regulation. So that's the problem. Regulation is weak, but you have child care businesses. Now, what happens when regulation is weak? A lot of change can happen to make more money than the smaller ones and also as well perhaps the funding isn't necessarily always allocated um, delegated correctly fairly. Okay. And how about well when you're talking about regulation, regulation when regulation is weak, no one is keeping a close eye on what providers are doing, right? What impact do you think that is going to have? on the quality of service you will get if the regulation is not as strong as it should be. Because regulation is there to actually monitor how people are behaving within the sector, to also watch out for any infringement in children's rights. Uh, if children's uh, care needs are being met, or if they are charged at the, price, at the correct price level, because some prices are just too exacting. You look at what people charge sometimes, you wonder if what is being charged is consistent with what is being offered. Value for money. We talked about value when we looked at uh, the earlier section on quality. Now, when you have weaker regulation, what, what will likely happen? How, how does it, that expose children to, to risk? What sort of risks are children exposed to? Children and families. needs are being met, the rights are being affected. Yeah, and their voices may be ignored as well. There's this need for regulation, especially when you have more players involved. You need to make sure everyone is playing fair. Uh, emphasis on large for profit child care providers. Why do you think profit is a, is a good thing? Is it a good or bad thing when it comes to child care? Depends on how how ethically minded you are as to how you would then use your profit, doesn't it? it it's not. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a good thing personally yeah. to have a massive corporation and then not be child centred. But if the profit was to go towards perhaps CPD or yeah. you know high quality staff, um, yeah. early they had the coalition government, didn't they? And they had that big focus on early year teacher status. Yeah. However, there's not comparative pay between quality teacher status and early teacher status. So, that's so has, it, has it been a good thing or bad thing bad in thing. that respect? Yeah. Sometimes some families may be priced out of mm -hmm. the sector because there's no, there's very little regulation. 
um, largest 20 years to chains have 10 percent market share. Can you imagine? Just 20 years. So they actually dominate uh, the market share according to the Department for Education 2015. Uh, expenditure on child care has been justified as a means to promoting mother's employment. Mm -hmm. You remember those days when the conservatives were saying, right, we want to we want mothers back to work. So let's make sure that they get the child care they need. That's how it was sold. How did it turn out? So in five years, what do you think is going to happen if nothing changes? There'll be no nursery. There'll only be the big ones that survive. Only the big ones that survive. Mm -hmm. People won't be able to afford. Affordability is going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. And availability. Right. Um, so post 20, that's after 2010. Promoting child development in mother's employment. We've talked about that. Um, between 2010 and 2012, there was a Liberal Democrat minister uh, responsible for the sector, right? And the goals were child development. Now, one day they were focusing on all these areas of development, okay? Uh, emphasis on unequal outcomes to be addressed by early intervention. How is early intervention going so far? Badly. Badly. You want to expand? Um, staff don't have the training they need to actually identify issues that children are experiencing. Yeah. Um, staff are required to carry out multiple roles. So, for example, the same in school um, could also be the deputy head and the year one teacher, yeah. which means the SEMCO aspect of the role is kind of put on the back burner. Um, so, things like EHCPs and um, assessments in class, uh, even carrying out observations, are not done really maybe as effectively as it could be, if at all. And then waiting times to access certain services is horrendous. Um, on average, how long will children wait to access it? My son got referred two years ago to speech and language. He didn't really need it, but, um, I just got the meeting last week, that was two years later. Two years? Two years. And he did, they assessed him and said he doesn't actually need it anymore. So I know, because I've waited two years, so I've done everything myself. Yeah. It's like an EHCP though, you can wait every single year, you can like submit a new one, submit a new one, keep going, keep going, keep going. There's a, there's a child in my little girl's class, she's still not that one, she's year three. And she, she, she definitely needs one. They're restricted. Yeah, like yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's got to go back and forth from the board, back to the mum, back to the board, back to the mum. 
That's where the problem is. You know, standardization helps in you know maintaining some kind of consistency across different settings across the, the nation. But standardizing is making an assumption that all children are the same. That's the problem. I don't think the government care enough about child care. Do you not? No. Why? Time probably a lot of damages. Yeah, it's too late. We've already happened. reached the point where um, anything that could have been done early on is it then leads to expensive. Yeah. Think about prison. Prison people get food three times a day. We can have the tellies, we can have the whatever, whatever else. But there's some children out there that can't have three meals a day. So there's clearly a line where they're just like, well, they need the food. What? They have to meet their basic needs in that in that setting. Whereas a child is somebody else's the same as somebody else, it's the parent's responsibility. So as long as like we can say they've got a house or like a, a house or some kind of accommodation, that's all that they really see, don't they? They don't be able to say how many meals a day they've got because they don't care. Yeah, yeah unless it's, it's not their responsibility, yeah. yeah. So they leave it to the parents yeah. and carers. Okay. Um, so that's so this part is looking at what the area of emphasis was, right? We had the Liberal Democrat minister, and after right from September 2012, the president has always been the conservative minister, and emphasis again was now more on mothers' employment. During this time, we had more emphasis on child development, uh, unequal outcomes, and school readiness. And that shifts as soon as we have a different uh, minister with a different ideology, they are looking more at the employment of the mother. So it's no longer about the child, okay? It's all about what we can give back to society. That's yeah. see that it's parents, mothers, so that's parents, parents. Uh, you can argue again, probably mixture of parents and children, and here you've got parents. Whereas during this time, it was child, child, child. So you can see a shift in emphasis. That's how they are perceived. Yeah. <laughs> that's how they are perceived. Okay, so that's again still a conservative minister. This has to do with um, different political ideologies. Okay, again, more emphasis being placed uh, on the market than on the child. So the child disappears from the picture.
Okay. Right. So you have policy focusing on making childcare viable. Again, like we said, giving availability and high quality to right, so you affordable, avail available, and good quality. How do the three go hand in hand? It's, it's difficult to ascertain. You cannot reconcile these uh, three. Because if you are going to make it affordable, quality is likely to suffer because quality does cost money. Yeah, but you say that, but then you got all credit in Sweden. Mm -hmm. The children go to school till seven, and the, the childcare is, is it free? So the 15 hours is not sufficient? No, because not everyone gets that. Ah, okay. They do, they do get 15, everyone uh, gets 15 at 3 to 4, but at not at 2. Um, and then the 30 again, you have to, um, that was another thing that National Day Nations Association, they reported in 2018, that there wasn't always a massive uptake on the 30 hours because it was like a portal system. Um, and they were losing out because people weren't aware of their um, eligibility to the 30 hours um, because it's income based and not all providers had all the training and they didn't know whether their parents were always eligible. Right. So more subsidies. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we are going to get more subsidies, it's going, that's more government spending. So there's more tax. Vicious cycle. Because the government does not have money of its own. It is going to fund, the more it's going to fund us, the more tax it's got to collect from us. I'm paying less out anyway because I don't want to be paying for my child's school or nursery. Okay. But I could pay more tax if I got free childcare from it. As long as the child is looked after. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alright. Makes sense. Availability, so amount and nature of provision, disadvantaged children benefited disproportionately from high quality early education. Do you agree with that? Are uh, disadvantaged children benefiting more than those who are? Yeah. No. Not. Okay. Is that a good or bad thing? Government funded places are coming from low income uh, families as well. So there's always going to be that kind of class warfare. Right? I was going to say it's Social Mobility Commission, isn't it? That's why we want the sort of the, the disadvantage to benefit so yeah. that they can prove as a government that they are helping social mobility yeah. and that they're putting back into the system. But this is working as a as well. that they tend to be the least qualified group of private providers. What impact does it have on quality? Well, some child managers can be really, really well qualified and good at their job. Yeah, so but do, generally speaking, they are the least qualified compared to others. The children aren't getting the quality of their So it may have an impact on, on quality. I'm not saying it's always going to have an impact, but it may. Uh, we need to be cautious there. Uh, 
that, 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 that the government agencies best quality provision provided by nursery schools compared to child minders. Is that your observation? That nurseries will provide better quality compared to child minders, for example? Do child minders have um, a curriculum? Child minders, they have accessibility rights. They are offset expected as well, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Are the expectations the same? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is it as rigorous? Is it that yeah. 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 And yes, yeah. in some cases, because yeah. they're with them, they can be with them for the whole day. Yeah. So sometimes they're not with you for a, they could be within school, can they? But they'd see multiple parts within the school, whereas they would perhaps get a more valid observation from a child minder if they're with them for a, for a full day. Not in every case, but. But they have to justify what they're spending their income on. Like schools have to justify yeah. what they're spending their money on. Yeah. Yeah. Do they not? I think they do have to do it in some respect. Okay. Right. Again, affordability for the state and for parents. So, generally speaking, government expenditure on preschool education in the UK is higher than average compared to other countries in the EU. Right? And what the government said regarding weak regulation, they said if we regulate too much, the sector becomes inefficient, so we must not over regulate. And in the end, you ended up with under regulation. Quality provision simply cannot be provided on the cheap. That's the preschool learning alliance saying that. Government is saying, let's provide quality provision, but at the same time, we want to make it affordable. You cannot provide affordable at the same time, good quality provision. It's not possible. Uh, and then you have funding for part time places. Um, and then big child care chain is not affected by the profit issue because they are big, right? So they, they are kind of protected there. Okay, right. So we quickly move to the next part. I cost of child care, I think we've talked about that. Right. Small scale pri uh, private providers, because they have fewer children, their profit margins are very, very small as well. So what it means <coughs> is the quality may be affected because what they can afford in terms of can they invest on good quality resources and stuff like that will be impacted on because of the tight margins. What is your experience? Anyone working in smaller yeah. scale? Is that true? <laughs> okay. In, in, so in some respects, yeah. it, it depends on um, resources, maybe perhaps we wouldn't have um, the same scale of money on resources, um, multiple roles as well, so I'm Dr. Samantha Senko, I'm a key person, yeah. there's three roles within one, so that's not necessarily quality as it actually would. Okay, and the government is failing to provide affordable places in poorer areas. Who is going to, to, to afford? <coughs> that, that's the mistake that was made closing sure start centers. The sure start centers were for uh, less privileged areas, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think we've talked about that affordability versus quality. Again, that expands on that point. Right? We are going to say we are affordable, then forget about quality. Then you have uh, deregulation, I've talked about that. Right. Uh, that, that, uh, right. Child minors to be able to look after up to four rather than three children under five. Why do you think that is an issue? Uh, that's the point I want to highlight there. Why is that an issue? 
coalition government wanted child minors to be able to look after up to four rather than three. So free up another space for wraparound care to go and have a look at those already. Yeah. What, what happens when the number of children increases? Quality is compromised. Yeah. Quality is compromised, yeah. I think it's trying to make up for the settings that they closed as well. Uh, relaxing ratios. So that's related to that. Uh, face strong opposition from the sector. Then you have uh, Matt Brown, Liberal De Democrats, and so on. They were all against that uh, change. Right? Policy led to consistency in relation to promoting quality. Why? Because of what Natalie said. If you have more children, then quality is going to go down because the ratios are not reasonable. Okay. Right. Now you had your aims at the beginning of the lesson. You want to go back to them? Okay. Have your aims been met? Roughly. Anyone whose aims have not been met? Aims the same at the beginning of the lesson. Have you started your assignment? I know you feel it's too heavy. It's never too heavy to start your assignment. Not yet. Okay. Are you thinking about it? Okay. Yeah. Just to plan. Okay. Right. Um, enjoy your lunch, everyone. Want to see me? I'm here.